verses, I want to tell you a little something. I saw on TV. How many of you know Gordon Bowe, the man the man, the piano player for Bill Gaither? Uh, he was on there doing a concert, and he sung, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. And he said, I have a lot of people come up to me after I sing that and say, I understand why you sing that. But he said it wasn't just for him because he was physically blind, but it was for everybody who was the spirit of my hand. We sing this song quite a bit, but you know, uh, as a preacher, it's been known to say you're either going into a storm or you're in a storm or you're coming out. And so the storm passes by all three verses. Usher, if you go come on the last verse.
thank you especially the Lord for the blessings of God and giving us an individual and the blessings of giving us a church. We pray that you continue to be with us, Lord. We pray that you continue to walk and follow you. We pray for the name of the church and the message of God. We pray that you continue to work for all of us and have some years of the Lord. We open our hearts and lives to receive it. We pray for those who are sick. We know each and every individual. We know the need and situation. Lord, I pray tonight, get touch on mine, 
Lord, make preaching easy, I pray. And Lord, I pray you touch my body, touch my throat, I pray. Give us clarity of speech, I pray. Speak to folk on the inside as we do our best to speak to them on the outside. And Lord, we thank you for the grace of God. We thank you, Lord, for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I don't know where we'd be without your grace, or what we'd be, or where we'd be at, or where we'd be in. Lord, I sure am glad that we're saved by the grace of God. Lord, help us tonight to do our best to preach about grace. We'll love you and thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I want to really preach out of the first two verses of Romans chapter number 5. And I see three things real quickly in these first two verses. But the first thing I saw, the Bible says, Therefore being justified by faith. When I think about that word justified, I believe that we can see the believer's part of it. Brother Jimmy, when you look at what Paul said in Romans chapter number 1, Romans chapter number 2, and Romans chapter number 3, we see that Paul is taking the Jewish people and the Gentiles and he's plunging them into the, the lowest of depravity. Basically, he lets them know that uh, uh, how bad and how wicked and how ungodly they are without the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, really, when you, when you go home, take time sometime this week to read Romans 1, 2, and 3. Basically, Paul's telling them how low down and rich they are. And when you think that it's bleak and when you think there is no hope, then chapter number 4, Sister Patsy, Paul begins to show them Jesus. Amen. He begins to encourage a little bit. And he begins to, to say that, listen, there's an atonement that's been made. There's one that's paid the price. There's one that has shown grace and mercy. I mean, we think about we think about Scripture, for instance, like Romans 3 at verse 23, where the Bible says, For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And then you think about other Scripture that the Lord uh, has given Paul. But then, when we come to Romans chapter number 5, it begins to show great pictures of grace. And when I looked at that word justified in the meaning pardon, I, I started researching that word pardon. And uh, one place that I came across, Sister Amy, it says to be pardoned is different from being paroled. And so I began to research that word pardon and I found out what happens when somebody is pardoned. And I went to several websites and and I found that there's, you know, pardon is different from different states. You know, some in some states, for instance, um, a lot of states they say to be pardoned doesn't mean that you still doesn't have a record and things like that. But I came down to the state of Louisiana, and it says when you're pardoned in the state of Louisiana, it, it said that the slate is wiped clean. It means it. Uh, one thing that I read there. I went and read a little bit further and I came to one state and they said in their court system and I'm sure maybe Sister Melissa I wish I could have called Chancellor today got a little more information but uh, Sister Melissa may know they say in some states when somebody is pardoned what they do Sister Tori is they bring all the records everything that I mean everything that they've ever done for it 
the door is open so you can get in and out. But Brother Josh, the blessing that God showed me is 2,000 years ago. Amen. The door of grace was open so that we can go in. Amen. And guess what? It was hung on three nails. I'm glad there is a door of grace. And I'm glad it swings open. Amen. For whosoever will. And I'm glad that the believer has a pardon. But not only has the believer found pardon, but the believer has peace because of the grace of God. For the Bible says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But here's where I'm interested in verse number 2. Then the Bible says, by whom also we have access by faith into this place where we stand and rejoice and hope of the glory of God. So I see the believer's pardon. And then I see the believer's peace. But I'm glad that the believer can have a place. And that place is called grace. So that's what I want to preach on tonight. I don't want to preach about the place called grace. And I'm glad that we can live in grace. Every day we live in grace. Every day we walk in grace. Every day we talk in grace. Every day we read our Bible in grace. Every day we pray in grace. Every day we live and breathe and have our being in grace. See, Brother Josh, you see that step I just took? I took it in grace. Sister Susan, that bread that I just took, I took it in grace. I'm glad tonight that God has shed His grace on you and I. I'm glad tonight that we can step into grace. We can have peace. We can have peace. is unforeseen. The definition of unforeseen means to see beforehand. I researched Brother Austin how many times Brother Jerry, the word grace shows up in the Bible. And 170 times you'll find the word grace. 99 times the word grace shows up in 14 different books. And those 14 different books out of the 66 are the prison epistles. So, Sister Patsy, 99 times out of the 170 times that the word grace is mentioned, Brother Gary, it's where the Apostle Paul has penned the words grace. And Sister Regina, I thought about that. Now, I love Paul. I love reading the prison epistles. I get a lot out of Paul's writings. But I thought about that. I thought, now, why does Paul get all the grace? Why does he get to soak up the grace? Hey, man, he's got all the grace. But I began to think about the reason that Paul could write about the grace of God and talk about the grace of God and understand the grace of God is because in Acts chapter 9 the Bible lets us know that he was on the road to Damascus. He was on the way to slaughter Christians. He was on the way to persecute the church. He said, he said in 1 Corinthians, he said he was seen of Peter. The Lord was at the resurrection. He was seen of Peter. And he was
Amen. And so I thought about some scripture. For instance, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 10, Paul said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than the all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. And therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so He believed. Now Christ be preached that He arose from the dead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain and your faith is in vain. See, He said the reason we live and the reason we preach and the reason we're doing all these things for God is that because of grace, because of Jesus. And we're not living in vain. We're not worshiping in vain. We're not and they listen. Had it not been for the grace of God, had it not been for Jesus, we'd be wasting our times tonight. We could be at the we could be at the lake eating a hot dog and roasting some marshmallows. But because of the grace of God, we've got a reason to be here tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got a reason to be here. I'll come back. Second Corinthians chapter number eight, at verse number nine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that ye through His poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice for this as a speed of you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forty years ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to the man hath, and not according to that he hath not. When you read on now, I mean, read before these verses, read after these verses. Paul again is encouraging the church of Thessalonica and Corinth and Philippi and Galatia and Colossae. He's telling them all the reason we're here and doing what we're doing is because of the grace of God. I mean, that was Paul's message, the grace of God. Amen. The grace of God will change a person. Amen. People are saved by the grace of God. Verse number 19, I wanted to read on further. And not that only, but uh, who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace. I thought about that. Paul said, anybody wants to travel in this grace and move in this grace and get on, in on this grace, he said, just tag right along with me. Listen, I, I, I thought about that young lady who testified to me last Sunday that if she died, she'd go to hell. Listen, I'm living in grace. I'm saved by the grace of God. And all we're trying to do as believers and as witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ is just trying to get some people saved, trying to get some people to believe in Jesus and travel right along with us till we get to glory. Amen. Amen. Traveling in grace. I like... I like 2 Corinthians 9 at verse number 8. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have an all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. I like 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 at verse number 9. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You know, I think about what James chapter number 4 verse 6 says. says that dad, he giveth more grace. Hey, I'll tell you what, here's one of my favorite verses. It'll cover it all. 1 Peter 5, 10 says the, the God of all grace. Amen. That right there covers it. 1 Peter 5, 10, the God of all grace. He is the God of all grace. There's unforeseen grace. Then not only unforeseen grace, but there's unfathomed grace. The definition of unfathomed means a depth that cannot be searched out. You all remember I was telling you about the book of gold? And uh, I start, you know, I read in that book about these submarines that use gold as a conductor. Well, that got me wanting to study on submarines. And so I started studying on some submarines and I found it interesting as uh, we were talking about unfathomed, not knowing the depth of something. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 3 that there's no way that we can comprehend the height or the depth or the width of, of the love of God. There's no way that we can ever understand the grace of God. What definition is unmerited? I heard Bud Gentry used to say 
case he dies, I think that's the word, you know, where they have to have the tank and the oxygen and the flippers and all those different things. They've got to take courses. They ought to in the Amen. Take, take courses of how to deep sea dive. And uh, I don't remember where I read it, but they, I heard Don, Don's uh, uh, cousin's husband, uh, Kevin, with the fire department, he had to learn how he had to take some courses with deep sea diving and things like that, going down the bottom of the lake and all that. Maybe Taz and Aaron and others have. But you, you have to be careful. They can't take it. They never just make it simple where I can understand it. If you go too far, you'll blow up. I mean, really. If they can take you a submarine, they said you can go so far. You can go to, if you took a submarine to the farthest depths of the ocean, said that you would implode from the inside out. Well, Brother Mike, I got something from that as I was reading that. Now listen, there's been some times in my life where I felt the presence of God in such a mighty way. And I felt the peace of God. And I felt the grace of God. I mean, there's been so, so many times that God and the Holy Ghost Spirit has rested on me so heavy that I just felt like God's going to implode. I felt like Unforeseen grace, unfathomed grace, but unfavored grace. Romans 5 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I can't help but think of, I can give you a lot of stories. But one of my favorites is John chapter number 8, the woman taken in adultery. And they brought her before the Lord Jesus Christ and by Moses' law, she should have been stoned. But they were trying to trip the Lord. Had, had he not had him stoned, then he's breaking Moses' law. Had he had him stoned, then the Romans could have arrested him for taking their place and doing their job and their task or whatever. But Jesus, he didn't say a word. He got down, the Bible says he got down in the sand and it began to write. And before you know it, people that had rocks and had stones, they began to drop those rocks and those stones. I'll never forget being in a church service. I won't mention the church, but I went, we, we went to have a service one night in a court. And I had a dear friend invited me to his church, a very large Baptist church in Johnson City. And went there that evening, and there was about 2,500 people there in that church that night. And there was a young lady that came to the altar, and she was broken. I mean, broken and crying. And y'all remember, I went to Gary Phillips, who used to work with Andy. And this young lady got up there, and she began to testify about some sin in her life. And it got quiet and it seemed like people were shunning. And all of a sudden, one of the deacons out of that church, they had some decorations, you know, a lot like this. And she does not I mean she confessed before God and she confessed before men and it's some pretty big stuff. But you know what? That deacon, I'll never forget him taking this big old rock and he came out there and he walked right in the middle of that aisle and he launched that rock and it landed right on the floor. And I mean it made the biggest boom sound. And he said, he who goes without sin, cast the first one. And people just knew. They came and they started hugging on her and loving on her. And people started repenting and getting right with God. People started. And, and Brother Arden Taylor was the pastor at that time. And he said, Brother, he said, right now you're witnessing God who will go revive. He said, you're, he said, I just witnessed and he was crying. He, was, he said, you're just he said, you just witnessed two brothers that have not talked in 19 years coming and reconciling with one another. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. It was, but you know, I mean, all of us, uh, hey, all of us are out of stone throw a distance. We're all sinners, amen. I guess it seems like lately I've been preaching a lot about how all of us are sinners because guess what? We're all sinners. And, and if, we're, if we're all careful, as human beings, we'll be fall timers. But you know what? I like 
that song, Sister Joanne, that says, He looked beyond my fault and He saw the tears. Amen. I'm telling you, when you look at my life and if we were to look at your lives, and I mean, I, 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 I'm, ta I'm talking about this descriptive day. We'd see ourselves as nothing and a nobody and just worthless without Jesus. When you really think about it, we'll go to the cemetery and we'll take and we'll return the body from whence it came ashes to ashes to dust to dust. We return that body back to the earth from whence it came. Really, we're all just dirt. This body is going to fade away. But this soul is going to live on somewhere. And I'm glad my soul is going to live forever in heaven. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He said, Wherefore we labor that whether absent or present, we may be accepted of Him. How can we be accepted of Him? Knowing the grace of God. Listen, I don't deserve, I can't answer for nobody else, but little old Nathan Daniel Jennings does not deserve the grace of God. Amen. Unfailing. Guess what? He loves me. And He loves you. See, recently, I've been praying and preaching a lot about faith. But you know one thing I can't get over is the grace of God. I've tried for 35 years to understand the love of God and the I understand the grace of God and the I understand the mercy of God and the But I'm glad I don't have to understand it. I'm glad I just live it. Amen. I think about Exodus chapter number 23, verse 20 and 21. Moses wanted to see the glory of God. He wanted to see the Lord. And God said, Moses, there's a place I need. Come and stand on the rock. I'm glad tonight that God has a place by Him. And I'm glad that that place is grace. Amen. That's the message. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Have you experienced the grace of God? It is the grace of God that saves us. When our finances are there, the grace of God gives us it. When we're sick, the grace of God. When we've got troubles, the grace of God. When we're going through a storm, the grace of God. When we pray and we call upon the Lord, it's the grace of God. He answers us. Lord, we love you. Lord, I made a feeble attempt to try to preach about such a powerful so that there's no way we could ever cover it up. Lord, I don't understand at all the grace of God, but I'm glad I've experienced it. For I pray that everybody in the sound of the Lord has a spirit of sickness. Lord, tonight, if there's one that's never been saved, I pray that tonight they can experience the grace of God. Maybe tonight someone, not where they truly need to be, but the Lord, tonight they can experience the grace of God. Maybe somebody's going through something.
I'm always done when he's out of town. This is the community in God's house. I see Brother Johnny. Oh, brother, I love you. Would you dismiss us in prayer tonight, brother?